Okay. Okay. All right, let's go to the slides. The dimming way. William Edwards Deming. Born in 1900, Sioux City, Iowa. He's a Midwesterner. Got his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. One of the things that you will find as you become more interested and do research in the area of quality is all of the major significant contributors in the quality field are engineers. Now, why is that? Why don't people from marketing or finance or they follow this approach, but why haven't they big, been big contributors? Any idea? I got my own theory. <clears throat> they don't have the technical background to appreciate the important issues. What's different about engineering? more of a scientific approach. You're forced to think. <laughs> An engineer, you got to think critically. And you, a certain level of mathematical maturity, uh, the sciences are required in engineering. Don't, don't you see that? And uh, I've said for many, many years, uh, a baccalaureate degree in mechanical engineering is basically the liberal arts education of the 21st century. Uh, when you look at the needs of society, what does society need? Society needs technically trained workers. And uh, so, the, my point is that I think that it's important to recognize that these uh, great contributors, and we'll only talk about a few of them, we talk about some of the major ones. Got a, a B.S. Uh, in electrical engineering from University of Wyoming in Laramie. A master's degree uh, from the University of Colorado in Boulder in 1925. Then went uh, to Yale. Um, that's interesting because Yale is a very special school. Um, at the time he went, there was no engineering program at Yale. Uh, it, was, it was called mathematical physics. That's as close as they got. Uh, today they do have an engineering program, but they don't have uh, discipline-specific engineering programs. They just have engineering. Okay. Died uh, 20th of December 1993. I, I was aware that Dr. D was not well. Uh, I, I served as the Midwest uh, coordinator for his last major PBS broadcast. And... Uh, <laughs> working with uh, Dr. Deming was um, uh, a real th thrill, but also a challenge. Because his mind, he had the ability to be thinking, it seemed to me he'd be thinking about ten things all at the same time. And um, uh, a lot of energy, uh, a tremendously deep thinker. Uh, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about his writings. He was reading the day he died uh, um, a book in my book series um, on design productivity written by Dr. Taguchi. Now, you know, of course, that he's uh, well known for this. And who, who did he say that this was came from? Who did Deming say that PDC? Who? Shoehart. Yeah. Okay. Deming's 14 points. Let's just review these. You've heard of the 14 points, right? What are the 14 points? Let's just summarize. What are they? They're Deming's definition and commandments to management. So God gave us the 10 commandments to keep us out of trouble. Deming gave us the 14 points to keep us out of trouble, okay? Create constancy of purpose. If uh, I remember my many, many 
times, months in General Motors at the corporate headquarters and at the different locations. The one I've spent the most time in is the uh, truck plant in Pontiac. Uh, and they have a video communication system. So if the CEO or some executive needs to communicate to employees, the email will go out and you go out in the hallways and they have all these big monitors in the hallways and um, they just talk to you. So it just so happened this one time I was spending 15 months at GM on a project that had originally been designed for me to do at the university but it contains some uh, proprietary, I was going to have to use some proprietary data that the unit that GM really did not want to get out, leave the company, and so they said, "Look, you've done this before. How about taking leave? Just come work for us for 15 months." And they make it very uh, worthwhile. And so uh, I rented an apartment up in Pontiac, and uh, near Pontiac, and. Uh, uh, this was my first day. It just happened to be that day was Rick Wagner's first day as CEO. And so he was making a, there was one of those things like 10 o'clock, go out in the hallway, listen to that. Very effective. And the key point that he wanted to make was that um, I don't plan any immediate major changes in the management of the company. That is, the he'd been serving as the director of North American operations for the prior it's like four or five years, he was aware of the what the strategic mission and direction of the company was, and he saw no need for immediate change, but that that would be under review, that they would be looking very carefully at uh, the company. Uh, and although he didn't use the word downsizing, if you read between the lines, it was obvious that the company was going to look carefully <clears throat> at every component to see if consolidation and downsizing was going to be appropriate. Uh, constancy of purpose. If every quarter you make an announcement as CEO, well, this is the direction we're going. Then the next quarter you say, well, that was good last quarter, but we're going this way now. And then the next quarter you say, we're going to go this way, the opposite direction. Well, before long, the employees, the, the troops are just not going to listen to you. You're just going to lose the troops. Besides the fact you're going to lose a lot of energy and money due to the fact that you have um, uh, inconsistent and oftentimes conflicting objectives. So, so, uh, so an organization needs constancy of purpose. If you take a company like General Motors, which, um, say, in the year 2000 had uh, an annual budget greater than all but 24 nations of the world, uh, it's um, it, it's a you think of it as a huge ocean liner. You don't just turn that sucker on a dime. It it takes a while to. To, to make changes. Number two, Deming said adopt a new philosophy of change leadership. Deming was a master at helping us to understand and by the way Deming start, started telling corporate America when he worked for the census, US Census, he started telling corporate America in the 40s what we had to do to be successful this was a time after the Second World War when productivity was king. Just ship it, put it in the box. Just make it, put it in the box, and ship it. Don't worry if it doesn't work. We'll tell them how to fix it once it gets there. Uh, and the reason for that is pretty simple to understand. There was no manufacturing capability anyplace else in the world. In 1945, the only the only place on earth where you could really make high technology products, what I'm talking about is typewriters, uh, printers, things like that, automobiles, was North America. The rest of the world had pretty much been bombed to the ground. Now, 
I'm not saying this is good or bad. I mean, it's just a fact. If you if you looked at Germany, there weren't any plants left. In fact, much of Europe, yeah, the Germans did the flattening during the war, and then towards the end, the Allies did the flattening. And of course, uh, the only uh, city in Japan that was spared was uh, Kyoto, the city of temples. And uh, uh, <clears throat> there are advantages and disadvantages of that. Uh, one of the advantages after the war, uh, General MacArthur's people, if you read some of the writings of General MacArthur, uh, during the time of occupation, you, you'll see that there was no time, no concern about retrofitting uh, factories. You didn't have to retrofit or upgrade equipment. There wasn't any. <laughs> You're building new factories. You, so you could, uh, you could have a new way. Um, change was the constant. And uh, a few people began to understand that. Now, uh, Deming did not achieve much favor in the United States till uh, 1980. So almost 40 years, uh, he was pretty well ignored by corporate America. He, uh, he began to be in favor when, when the CEO of Ford invited him to come and give a talk in January of 1980, and then people began to listen. C's depended on inspections to achieve quality. Now I have good news and bad news. Which do you want first? Bad news, bad. Inspection adds cost. That's the bad news. People um, may think, well, if we just inspect every stage, we'll end up with a good product. <coughs> but very quickly you find out that that the costs associated with excessive inspection seldom uh, compensates or seldom is is a good investment. That is, um, and in addition to that, many companies, particularly in the uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s, felt just by inspecting, you're going to get better performance. And uh, so they had mounds of inspection data, but they didn't do anything with it. Okay. Uh, oh, in the practice, point number four, in the practice of awarding business on the basis of price, consider total costs, life cycle costs. Start, yes. What was the good news? Uh, the, the good, good news, the, <laughs> okay, the bad news was uh, inspection is expensive. The, the good news is if you do it right, you can create a system where inspection is not required. That's the good news. Okay. In the practice of awarding business on the basis of price, consider life cycle cost. Five, constantly improve your production and service system to improve quality and productivity and therefore drive down total cost. Now this was rather revolutionary. The fifth point of Deming's 14 points, rather revolutionary. The idea that you could have productivity and quality together. Because we had the mindset that you could have as much quality as you could afford. And so therefore, quality cost. And any time you focused on quality, it meant that your productivity was going to go down. Six, institute on-the-job training, rotate. One of the biggest, um, well, uh, let me back up. When you go, uh, if you go to work for a large company when you get your degree and leave the university, you will probably go into a rotational training program. Uh, and different companies have different approaches, but the idea is to expose you to the culture for you to see the different group parts of the organization even though you might be, it might already be decided that you're going to work in one segment, it'll be useful for you to know about the other areas. Uh, this is a very Japanese concept. Uh, even, even today, you will find that rotating during specialization and generalization are balanced 
appropriately in many very effective companies. Okay. Focus on leadership at all levels from the shop floor